advancedsupermart.com. What macroeconomic themes do you see happening in Greater China? Um, well, it's uh, very simple. What we see is that the themes will be the dry, uh, those coming out from the third plenum that was announced uh, by the Chinese uh, government last year. So for this third plenum, the key thing is to make sure China rebalances from an investment-based to a consumption-based uh, economy. And from here, you will see that uh, companies like consumer staples all right, will benefit in case in as a main theme if we are to invest uh, long term in Greater China. All right, the other area are stuff like pharmaceutical, environmental protection, and of course, very clearly that is already happening, uh, information technology. So that is very much for China, and all this is in line will be with the third plenum of change, the government changing and rebalancing its policies. What is your outlook for markets in the Greater China region? Um, if you talk about China, it will still be volatile. All right. Number one is um, we see a lot of winners coming out eventually from the third plenum. In fact, but you cannot jump in and buy China just like this, even though it's, it's at nine times or ten times. All right. Our outlook is that we must know who, what kind of stocks to pick, who are the winners and the beneficiaries from from the change in policies. Clearly, uh, the winners w we expect to be would be the insurance companies who. Will, uh, contribute to the development of a better social safety net. All right, again, the pharmaceuticals companies, the infrastructure companies, the railway builders and, and folks like this. Well, there's so much about China. Then Chi Greater China also incorporates Hong Kong and Taiwan. In Hong Kong itself, we see property companies doing well. Some of the banks also doing well. All right, in terms of dividend paying banks, we like property companies in particular because the valuation has greatly priced in earlier the hard landing and the tightening by the Chinese government. All right. The other nice area that we like in Taiwan all right, would be on the technology uh, sector, which is benefiting from global growth. And obviously, one area that we like in particular are suppliers to the Apple supply chain. All right, the chip makers, the uh, iPhone casing makers, and these are one of the areas that we will be investing in because the valuation of technology companies are still very, very cheap. So the outlook for China is a bit mixed. All right, a bit mixed. We have to be careful with what kind of stocks we pick. For Hong Kong, are property companies, some parts of the banks, and for Taiwan, it's really the IT sector. But nevertheless, as an allocation approach, we still have about 60 over percent of our Greater China money focused in China. What will be the drivers and detractors to performance over the coming years? Um, the drivers would be what I've mentioned earlier. Those stocks like insurance firms, uh, IT companies, consumer staples, pharmaceutical companies, railway companies, those will benefit. Those will be the winners for the future. All right, the detractors, who will they be? Likelihood would be badly run companies, especially the state-owned companies. The state-owned companies that will be uh, restructured in view with the changes in the policies for the betterment of the uh, uh, Chinese stock market and Chinese economy. So in terms of overall outlook, you will and could be uh, hearing more bad news coming out from the China market. All right, so <clears throat> the drivers would be the new China stocks. The detractors would be the old China stocks. These are your energy, your materials, the badly run companies, those that have no corporate governance. All right, those would be the main detractors. What should investors who have already invested in Greater China do at this point? Uh, well, if you're already invested and you have uh, profited, say, because if you look at the Greater China market over the last one year, it has delivered about 12%. Not, not too bad, not as great as the developed market, but not too bad, seeing that China has not been performing for a few years now. So if you have uh, benefited from a double-digit returns or high single-digit returns, um, you would have benefited from the, the upside of those new China stocks 
which has which is now becoming exp which has now become expensive. So you want to take some profit and spend it on a holiday or take your wife out for a nice dinner or things like that. Uh, you can I mean maybe it's time for you to take some profit but retain the capital as a medium to long term investment. Yeah. But if you have not invested in China at all, all right, especially in the last three or five years, uh, China was not a uh, in a big favor for as an allocation, then maybe it's time for you to gradually invest on a monthly or a quarterly basis. Are there any sectors that you are particularly bullish or bearish on in the greater China market? Uh, similar to the themes that we have, uh, we don't like banks, we don't like energy, we don't like materials, we don't like industrials. Those are some of the more cyclical stocks that makes up a big part of China's uh, index. Uh, we don't like that so much. All right, we like. Um, uh, railway companies currently, we, we like uh, food manufacturers and also <coughs> we like because of the growth and the recovery that we're seeing in the developed markets, we like uh, sectors that are also exposed to improvement in export. All right, over the next two to three years, with the fundamentally strong recovery in the developed markets in Europe and US, we see China and Greater China, including Taiwan and Hong Kong, benefiting from the improvement in, in the developed market recovery. But, but then again, don't forget, all right, investing in China or in, or in Greater China is very much about China, all right, looking at the drivers of the performance, the sectors. We do not uh, have sector bias, all right? What we do is we look at the policy and the changes. Say, for example, we know that the main theme is that China will rebalance from a consumption, uh, from an investments-driven uh, economy to a consumption economy. So we pick stocks from a bottom-up approach. All right. If we do so, then we pick the right winners. All right. If you look from a bot, uh, bottom, uh, top-down approach, likelihood you'll be picking up the wrong stocks because the Chinese index is made up of big banks that are state-owned and badly run without good corporate governance or energy companies that are not making money or not profitable and too cyclical. So it has to be from a bottom-up approach all right, and being driven by the positive policy changes.